Alright, well, jazz it up, jazzer. Nah! <laughs> it's just like I'm driving. What? What? Alright. Build a model airplane. <laughs> Hello, and welcome back to Night Cheese Book Club, the best podcast you know of. If you don't, well, I was going to say if you don't know any other ones, but it can be the best if you know a few. I'm flattered if we are people's first podcasts. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff out there. <laughs> <laughs> and you're probably just our friend being nice to us, but uh, it, look, we'll take it. Oh, I'll take any sort of positive attention. Thank you, and it's appreciated. Negative and to anything. Nah, whatever well, you got. Yeah, you know, <laughs> a download is a download, a listen is a listen. Yeah, you can't hurt our feelings. <laughs> hmm. Don't, uh, don't well, try. <laughs> Night Cheese Book Club. This podcast is one in which we talk about books, spoiler free. We're not going to ruin any storylines for you. Mm. You're going to have an appetizer of a book. You can read it. You can choose not to read it. You could, we're trying to pick some popular stuff. You can pretend that you've read it. To your friends, if you don't want to do the work of actually reading. Yeah, and frankly, yeah, because we tell you enough, but frankly, if you really want us to read something, start complaining. Just complain. See what will happen. Yeah, we'll there you go. We'll, we'll give it attention. Yeah. I am joined by my lovely sister, Presley. Hi. And we are your co-hosts. I'm Suzanne. We're bringing you Night Cheese Book Club. Yeah. Today's episode... Is Never Lie by Frida McFadden. Do, 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 do. Yeah, this so this one is not super talked about uh, in the popular book community sorts of things, but this is a very popular book. Yes, and we will tell you what we think um, after we're done talking a little bit about what we've done since we last uh, talked. Yes, to update you on our lives. Mine? Which will only take a minute, but if not, skip through it. Come on. Don't skip through it. You care. It's probably interesting. I have been reading so much. I'm mm -hmm. glad because I was in a little bit of a book slumpishness maybe two weeks ago. And then I don't know what changed, but I think I'm just liking what I'm reading a little bit more. And um, I've been able to get through things a little bit quicker because I like it. Yeah, I feel like it takes that one good book to pull you out, and then you're like, I'm back, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Just when I thought I was out, <laughs> yeah, they pulled me back in. Uh, so yeah, tons of reading. It's been hard to focus as much time on audiobooks when there are so many podcasts right now that I want to listen to. That's Last cool. podcast is killing it. The whole, like, uh, atomic bomb Oppenheimer series that they did was just engrossing. I just finished their Mothman series, which was very funny. They were just clever It's fellas. always good. Jeez. It's good. What have you been up to? Well, first off, I keep feel like I have to cough, because you lit... She didn't light one. She lit two incense at the same time. It was like a Prince video in here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, uh, like, but th that's not going to be quality air for me to be breathing. It's not. I'm not going to get in a van with Cheech and Chong so that I can atmosphere. freshen my lungs. Why would you not get in a van with Cheech and Chong? Because I can't breathe. Well, I would. Yeah. But not right now before breathe. Not before I do a podcast because I, I feel like I'm going to cough a whole bunch. But I'm not going to because that will hurt your little ears. Well, it's appreciated. Don't bring your coughs here. So what I've been doing is um, I went out to my friends. Um, they run a promotion called Infinite Terror, so they do a lot of, like, stuff with, um, like, the local scene in Baltimore with, like, metal bands and stuff, so they had, like, their bigger show this weekend, Death of Summer, and so I went to that on Friday night, and it was so much fun. All of the bands were super good. Um, everybody was really nice. I had a great time, and it was just really fun. And... Uh, yeah, like, I don't know. It's just, it's nice to socialize. Um, Say the name of the one band. Uh, the last name was called Bonganator. The last band. Bonganator? Yeah, you said the last name. Did that band have a first name and a last name? 
What did I say? He said the last name was Bonganator. <laughs> like it's what? Charles Bonganator. <laughs> Harold Bonganator. <laughs> That's my Christ given name. <laughs> That's a cool name. Um, no, that was an awesome show. Like, what's funny is their personality online makes them look kind of like silly and like, oh, we smoke pot, blah, blah, blah. They were actually quite professional, which was nice. That is nice. And uh, it was just a fun time. Everybody was, you know, dancing around and um, I had a, I had a few drinks and then I got picked up by uh, Suzanne and our mother. <laughs> it's just funny. And then I screamed that I want to stop at Sheets, which is like a local convenience store thing. And I screamed that I need a quesadilla and, you know. But you didn't get a quesadilla. Drunk people things. I got cheese curds, which any cheese, cheese in any form, especially if I've been drinking, that's great. It's yeah. the best. It's on brand for us. You're supposed to do that. I love cheese curds with the Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce. If you know me, you know that I will be your designated driver if you need it. I'll let, yeah. Like, so I will try to help you out, friends. I'll I don't you. want you to struggle. No. Then don't just, drink and drive. Yeah, don't do that. That's, that's, that's bad news. That's low vibe things to be doing. And we don't, we don't want that. We don't need it's it. Very inconsiderate. We're against it. So never drink and dry, drive, never lie. And we got there. Which is the title of the book, but mm -hmm. I think that everyone lies. What is it you lie like on average 10 times a day? Something like that? Who? Not I. Everyone. I My never friend, uh, Amanda, who is a psychology major, she has a degree, not even a major, she's graduated. She's grad, she's educated. You can tell she does that kind of stuff because when you're talking, she squints her eyes a little bit. And then you, you can see the gears turning, and then, and then and you, she's figured you out. Yeah, and then you just have to tell the <laughs> truth, because she already knows. Uh, she also is not judgmental at all, so she's the best person to tell things to. And that's why you can just tell her things. The other day, I told her that, like, after... It was happening for, like, two weeks. After I would get out of the shower, I would get hives really bad, and I don't know why. And it wasn't, like, new soap. It wasn't anything. I think it was some sort of weird anxiety thing. And I said that to her, and she was like, hmm, that's not good. And then I felt like, I was like, I think I feel better. She cured your hives. Kind Just of. Just with that. Thanks, Amanda. Yeah. She probably didn't even know that. No, she thinks and I'm added, weird for saying it. No, the, uh, the added bonus the is that she will back. forget 90% of what you tell her. Mm. Perfect therapist. Yes. Yeah. That secrets in a cave. Yeah. Perfect. That's brilliant. Well, well, well. Yes. Frida. Good name. Freedom she is Adam. a prolific writer. I think that she self-publishes a lot of stuff, which is brilliant if you've got the numbers to support it. Yes. And, I mean, clearly she does. It's just, like, a lot of thrillers and stuff, which you can gobble them up. They are. They're, like, potato chippy sorts of books, where it's just exciting and fun. And this is exactly bringing it back around to the earlier thing. If you need, like, a good book to pull you out of a slump, a little, a little thriller thing to pull you back out. It doesn't take long to listen to or read. Definitely. This one was from September of 2022. Yeah, so yeah. not too old, but still getting great sales. Right, along with, like, and this is, like, the more popular ones I'm sure you guys have heard of, like, The Housemaid, The Housemaid Secret. Those are quite popular right now, which we may or may not be talking about sooner than later. Mm -hmm. There's one called The Inmate. <laughs> and like, I don't know, it's, I just love a cover with like something dramatic on it, like an eye through a peephole or like a bloody shoe. And you're like, whoa, mystery. It's very dramatic. Um, I think that's good. Yeah. And then I saw online it says she's a practicing physician specializing in brain injury. And like, then when I, just reading her list of accolades, I was like, what am I doing with my, like, I, I'm like, have I been staring at a wall for 20 years? What am I doing? Hmm. Doesn't like writing these books, doing brain injury stuff. Uh, I was like, oh, it really will make you feel like you haven't been as prolific as you should have been. <laughs> it makes you question, what have I been doing? I guess I could be doing more if this doctor is also publishing books. I know. I'm like, well, I'm trying. Well, I'm getting there. We're getting there. Let it let it be inspiring, everyone. Yeah. We're if, medicated now. We'll get there. If Frida can do it, so can you. Truly. Grab life by the balls. Yeah. Well, go to school for the brain stuff if you're going to do that. That one you can't just do. Yeah, like I feel like maybe... Most other things you could figure out. 
Yeah, like writing and stuff, absolutely go for it. Especially, I don't know who needs to hear this right now, but if you're in the middle of writing something or thinking about it, go do it. Stop it. Stop procrastinating. Mm -hmm. Get over there. Get, be get, get behind that keyboard. Put yourself in a situation where you have to write. Yeah, tippy tap. Well, I like to, you know, take your stuff somewhere else where you have to sit and write them. Sure, Go to yes. the library, go or to the like, coffee shop. Tell people, and if you don't do it, you'll be embarrassed. Tell people then. Hire someone to... Shame you. Pinch you on the bottoms of your feet if you don't give them 10 pages a day. But not in an erotic way. Well, that's up to you. Yeah, don't, that, I don't want to know. That's up to you, but I feel like that would take that's a lot of call. time, too. Yeah. Um, what I did like about her Instagram is she posts a lot of funny stuff and, like, memes and stuff. I like that, because, like, I mean, who doesn't like to break up the monotony of of life with a little funny. Yeah, I do like that humor. too. It does, it, it feels very personal, her page. Yeah, and Of just that she's like, this is funny, this is funny, yeah. this is my book, this and is funny. I'm making a 100% assumption here, but like she seems like a person who's good at internet, so she knows the memes and stuff that like, I don't know. Our bigger ones, yeah, yeah. agreed. Or like what's funny or what, it, like it's, I don't know how to describe it, but like internet humor. She gets it. Right. Shall I read the back? Yeah. Because you did the last one. Now you do this one. I'm tired of talking. I don't remember. Okay. Newlyweds Trisha and Ethan are searching for the house of their dreams, but when they visit the remote manor that once belonged to Dr. Adrian Hale, a renowned psychiatrist who vanished without a trace four years earlier, a violent winter storm traps them at the estate, with no chance of escape until the blizzard comes to an end. In the search of a book to keep her entertained until the snow abates, Trisha happens upon a secret room, one that contains audio transcripts from every single patient Dr. Hale has ever interviewed. As Trisha listens to the cassette tapes, she learns about the terrifying chain of events leading up to Dr. Hale's mysterious disappearance. Trisha plays the tapes one by one, late into the night. With each one, another shocking piece of the puzzle falls into place, and Dr. Adrian's Hale web of lies slowly unravels, and then Trisha reaches the final. The one that reveals the entire horrifying truth. Mm -hmm. Oh my, I, I can't, oh, it was the end part. Ah. Ah. See, that's where Scary Scream could have come in, Suzanne. Right, right. When you say that, I just thought of Scary Spice. But that's oh, a thing from the 90s. Too, yeah. 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 Yeah, wow. This was, uh, I mean, it was just a very quintessential thriller sort of book. I found that a lot of the things were expected, but not in an unpleasant way. And there, there were still twists and turns that keep you intrigued. And the topic itself is yeah. interesting. Like, I, I love a found tape. And a remote manner. Yeah. Who doesn't? I thought a lot about um, how I like... I know that it's not for everybody. I like a cast of very flawed characters mm -hmm. where you're like, all of these people have some pretty bad character traits and I don't know which one is even good or bad. Yes, yes. Uh, I can definitely, I, my favorite thing about it was the length of it. But that being said too, with like the amount of characters that were in it and the length of it, I thought paired very well. Yeah. Because it didn't feel like, Oh, people popping up here and like it just kind of flowed together. I do definitely like um, the before and after takes of things. This one, I felt I definitely could tell. Well, obviously it said when it was changing it, but I could tell drastically between the present and the past, like present and flashbacks. It was the writing style was very clear. It hopped back and forth, and I really like that. But I feel like, especially for one that it is hard to pay attention. The length of this book, perfect. Perfect mm -hmm. little mystery. And you're right, it did have a lot of aspects from thrillery stuff, and I don't know if this is just me, because like, it feels like I should be embarrassed to admit such things, but I did not see the ending coming, so it was a surprise to me. I don't know about everybody else, because I know most people are like, I saw it coming a million miles away. I did it, so. Well, I think you also, I mean, in the same way that you don't like to know the synopsis of the book very much, 
Maybe you aren't guessing so hard. My, my brain doesn't like make guesses. Just want to absorb the information. Yeah, like when people say like, oh, I guess the ending, but my brain doesn't even think like that. My brain thinks like, we're here in this moment right now reading this thing. I wonder what'll happen. Mine is detectiving the whole time. See, mm, I don't do that. I say, it's gotta be one of these jerks. Actually, I'm gonna figure out who. Yeah, like, you are really good at that, because I'm just like, yeah, somebody said this weird thing to me today, and you're like, yeah, they they probably, when I'm... Were they holding their car keys in their left hand? Right, or, or something. And they had a bag full of cans of soup, and you go, well, they were. Yeah, mm -hmm. where they're like, oh, well, somebody, like, got caught stealing something, and you were like, he's been stealing for months, and I'm like, what? And then it turns out you're usually right, so I'll give you that. I mean, because I'm seeking out friends with degrees in psychology, uh... I mean, I'm just constantly on the quest to understand the human brain. It's very fascinating. It is fa It is intricate. It is fascinating. I don't understand it myself. Nobody does, really. That's the first thing that you learn, is that nobody knows anything. Mm -hmm. Everything's garbage. Can't help it. I, um, I like, so, I mean, I like, like you were talking about the characters and stuff. Uh, I thought that it was... A good pairing of like that oh my god what am I doing with this I like that they were like newlyweds but it was like that thing I don't if I had a nickel for every person that I know that they're like yeah and they got married after a year and now they're just together and then you're like how you don't know that person it's crazy you never know anybody keep that in mind no shame because yeah I oh, do no know shame for it. I Some, do know yeah, people like, who got married uh, really really quick and they have a great relationship and that it works for them. But for a lot of people, yeah, when they're like, I just wonder. In this book, when she's saying, like, you know, I don't know him really well. And I'm like, why are you married? That's, That's what wild. I mean. Yeah. Like, and just for myself, I don't, I wouldn't take that kind of risk. Right. And that's, that's a, absolutely not a judgment. If anything, like, I think that it is life is short. So, like, you got to, if you're going to do something, absolutely jump in. Um, but yes. Personally, and I mean, we are two unmarried people, so how can we really know? <laughs> we don't know anything. But, um, but I will form an opinion on but it. But let me tell you what I think about yes, it. Well, I mean, it's the same way with kids. People think that because we don't have kids, we don't understand. Like, oh. I don't have kids because I do understand. Yes. Oh, I understand. I I'm understand. way too selfish to give up my life for theirs because that's what it would be. I would give up, you know, 85 point nine percent of my own life for them i need my sleepies i just have to i'd have to be a nurse full time all the time and work overtime and i don't want to do that it makes me really sad i'd have to cook someone else dinner and then cook myself dinner that's two dinners and wipe a butt i don't often care it's i can't again uh, it's not my would be mean to it and it would have to learn hard lessons yeah and then when the world's gonna be on fire soon yeah yikes Yikes. Um, my favorite thing out of the whole book, because this is this is a personal dream of mine, so seeing it in here, I was tickled. I love the idea of a, hanging up a huge portrait of yourself. I like that I also. I love it. Uh, if you, actually even that show that I went to, somebody was wearing a shirt with pictures of themselves. Can you not do that in the mic? No. <laughs> um, Somebody was wearing a shirt with pictures of themselves on it, and I was like, this is fabulous. I love it. That guy that you said looked jolly, Andy, mm. he was wearing a shirt with pictures. And I was like, this is fantastic. I love self-love. So it'd be even funnier if you just didn't mention it at all and you were kind of a downer, but you had a shirt of yourself. <laughs> no, he, he's jovial and you can tell. And actually, multiple people walked by and they went, is this you? And, like, it really revved up the crowd. That um, would happen there. So I love a portrait. Also, I wouldn't be mad if we got a portrait painted of us. Wouldn't that be funny? We yeah. should do that. We'll put it in a spooky mansion. I have a really nice portrait of myself from my friend Tara Booth, who mm -hmm. is an amazing artist. She's been a great friend. She's very funny and cool and has a very interesting brain. And everyone should check out her art stuff, Tara Booth. That's just... She has the personality of an art like she is she is an artist. definition of artist yes like eccentric and it's not like a thing that like oh maybe she would no because she's known her for a long time she has always been that free spirit 
Yeah, we were friends for since we were teenagers, so we've known each other a really long time. But check her out yeah. if you like art and you like conceptual things that are uh, delightful and funny or thoughtful. <laughs> Tara Booth. I will also say I love found tapes. I love the idea of found tapes. Because I like to detective things, the idea of uncovering a mystery is delightful to me. That there's a treasure trove of secret information waiting yes. to be discovered. I will also say, I don't know if you remember this, but so there was a thrift store that was on the way walking home from school back when I was a youth. And my friends and I would stop in frequently to look for wacky vintage clothing or like vinyl records and cassettes and stuff of like punk bands and you could get some real good stuff. I got an entire collection of Bad Religion for like 25 cents a record which is unreal but at one point we found some cassette tapes that were unmarked and we bought uh -huh. and when we brought them back to my house we put them on and I'm not even playing with you. These tapes sounded like the tapes from Evil Dead and everyone got mad at me oh, because no. I destroyed them. <laughs> <laughs> but I just can't bring that kind of thing down on me. Because you, they were hearing the Evil Dead, but you heard Kill Bill sirens. Yeah. And you thought, I need to, mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. need to nip this in the bud. Which is funny because, like, listen, I'll do a Ouija, I'll do this and that, but uh, something about Evil Dead, you just, you can't undo that, and you yeah. can't stop what's gonna come for there, you. There is a point between curiosity, and especially loving horror, there's a point between curiosity and knowing this ain't gonna be good for anybody. True. So, true. You, yeah, you gotta be, you gotta look big picture. Yeah, that's the one time that I'm not gonna I can fully that. investigate. That I'm like, mm, no. Yes, I, I definitely like that. Um... So I guess one of the things I was wondering, because we were reading the book, um, if you had a hidden room and you had like a bookcase and stuff and you had a hidden room, what book would be the trigger to open the door? Okay, so I've thought about this. I'm going to pick The Deep by Peter Benchley, because I think if you know me, you're going to know that I'm going to have a scary shark novel. Mm. I'm going to have multiple scary shark novels. It's a classic. Peter Benchley is great. And that uh, it's not one that everybody's going to go for, but it still is indicative of a type of reader. Okay. And that I would remember it. Because yes. you don't want to forget which book you picked. Oh, how embarrassing. And then you're just trying to figure out your secret door latch. I right know, especially if you've brought uh, a date over to impress them, and then you're just pulling books out and making a mess. That would be embarrassing. They won't be impressed. What's yeah. your secret book? Um, I also was thinking I would make it Twilight because I think that's really funny. But then I was also thinking if I made it Twilight, then a bunch of angsty women are going to be getting in my room. Like, you know, when the cat wants to get in and then yes. it gets in there and it's knocking over all your stuff. That would happen in my secret room. So, yeah, they're going to be in there. They're going to redecorate. So and it's going to be a cord. Maybe maybe it would be like Twilight Breaking Dawn. That way they would have had to have been there for a while if they're there at that point. So, What's your real book? Real book what? That's what you're going to go with? Breaking Dawn? Okay, my real book. Um, I guess if I had to pick a real book, um, maybe Full Throttle by Jill Hill just because I love adventures and short stories and I really love that book. I thought it was super cute. It's also like a big enough book that I feel like it would make a good lever. Could see that. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Alright, well, for the fun and games portion of this evening, we decided that we would administer the sociopath test to Presley. Just well, because... We. Way the formal way, right? We, we. No, I get no. You did. I. Uh yeah. Okay. I don't know how accurate this is gonna be, but it's from Psyduck.com. Psycom dot net. Mm, sounds very professional. Psyduck. <laughs> Psyduck. <laughs> this has all been part of a Pokemon. <laughs> gotcha.
All right, well, yeah, so I mean, mental health, everyone wonders, what am I broken about? And now we'll find out yours. What? Do you repeatedly lie to or trick others for your own gain or pleasure? Um, is sometimes an option? Yes. So you're never, rarely, sometimes, often, or always. Okay. Yes, sometimes. Do you act impulsively? Oh, probably often. Do you fail to plan ahead? Uh, rarely. I have to. With ADHD, I have to. Or I never get anything done. Do you consistently fail to fulfill work obligations? No. That's the one place because there's somebody watching me, uh, I'll do it. What's funny, I feel like mine isn't always for that one. <laughs> oh wait, did it... consistency... F wait, what is it? That was work. Stop trying to read it. Listen, I'm the proctor here. It's never. I always do my work. Do you consistently fail to fulfill financial obligations? Yes. I mean, what? Do you If my boyfriend's watching this. No. I have money. Do you consistently fail to fulfill financial obligations? Yes. Uh, stop talking. Wait. Are we saying always or often? Um, probably. Well, I always pay my bills, but like. Uh, after that, uh, who's, who Same. knows? I black out and then I wake up and I'm wearing like a new lounge fly bag and I don't have any money. I don't know how this one can be a rating scale. Have you ever engaged in criminal behavior? Well, yeah. I mean, who hasn't? Would um, you say always or know, often? Sometimes. Hmm. What do, would you say always or often? What are you doing? I would say often. Oh my god. And I'm not going to reveal anything. Because you never put anything in writing. Right. So I'm going to say sometimes because not really. <laughs> Do you find yourself unable to empathize with others dealing with difficult situations? No. I think I empathize too much, probably. If you hurt someone else's feelings, do you lack remorse or guilt? Um, sometimes. Are you aggressive? I wouldn't say that. <laughs> what? Uh, I would say that you are sometimes aggressive. Okay, sometimes. Well, uh, oh, fine, fine. How you are a how moody dare you, How dare you say that? Especially if you're hungry. You're royal bit. Okay, it didn't say hungry though. Hungry is included. And in fine. Do you engage in unnecessary risk taking or dangerous behavior with no regard for the safety of self or self or others? See, and I would say no, because especially if it's safety involved or whatever, I'm not doing it. Like, uh, uh, I would argue, as the devil shade for kid, that uh, if you're going to drink in public at all, it's a little bit risky. If you're going to... Well, that says with dangerous behavior or, like, disregard risk of... Risk-taking or dangerous... I mean, I, I guess if we're getting, I would like, say rarely. I think that everyone does. I guess if we're getting super technical with that, but, like, my mind with that kind of stuff went to, like, things like drinking and driving and stuff like that. And if it's, like, safety stuff, absolutely not. Like, I don't care. Usually, even if I am, like, pretty drunk or what, like, I'm always, uh, I don't want to hurt anybody. Hmm. Do you consider yourself superior to others? This is going to be telling. I mean, yes, but... Would only, you say always or often? Often. But only in the sense of like, and I'm sure everybody can relate with it, it's hard to find people on your level. I'm just saying. That's true. Stop. <laughs> They're always asking me to work. Do you use charm or wit to manipulate others for your own benefit? Often. It just works, especially at work. I work in a warehouse, too. It is not hard. Oh, you've got... All right, this is the results. Oh. What does that mean? <laughs> you have low indication of antisocial personality disorder. Well, well, well. Hmm. You know what? Afterwards, we're going to make you take it and then we'll post the results. <laughs> but I'm not surprised about that at all because, like, I don't think I am. And oh, I don't wow. know if as the, you know, like, sociopath or whatever, if you know that you're a sociopath. I think you can know. Some, you probably don't because you probably don't do a lot of, like, 
you know? I think you'd probably be a little bit aware of it. But you right. don't care. But, like, I definitely know about them. If anything, I care. I'm very empathetic. And I feel all of the feelings. And, like, you know, I never want anybody to be sad or hurt. That sucks. Life's about happiness and stuff. I Well, no. Those feelings are important to feel those feelings sometimes. Because, you know, you're a human. But for the most part, like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to hurt nobody. About 1% of females and 3% of males have antisocial personality disorder. Mm. Hmm. We've come out on top yet again, ladies. Yeah. Empathy. Empathy. It's interesting. Yeah. Um, we'll do yours and then we'll, and then we'll really see because she <laughs> thinks I'm the aggressive evil one. Mm -mm. People always think, people are like, your sister's so nice. No, she's not. She's Slytherin incarnate. She's not nice. She's Lady Macbeth. You think it, and then she stabs you in the back. That's not true. She is, I think you're pretty nice. Especially as a nurse, I think you are a very empathetic person. I have a specific code of morals that is for me. And it makes sense to me, and that's what I'm going with. That's all I'm working with. That's suspicious, but also I get it. So, all right, fair enough. Yeah. Well... That will bring us to everyone's favorite portion of the evening, Poetry Corner. Poetry oh. Slam Corner. There's butterflies and sparkles. It's beautiful. Butterflies fly in your mouth. Yeah, just, it's, it's the scene of From All Dogs Go to Heaven, the heaven part with the gems and the lion and stuff. Like, it's that. Just picture that. Um, who's going first? You or I'll I? I'll go first. All right. All right. I did a haiku. Hmm. Would you say all night? Found tapes, what temptation? They reveal so much. <laughs> I like that. What temptation? It sounds kind of Shakespearean. Yeah. And the cheese that I picked, I picked a cheese ball covered in blanched almonds mm. that's on the table of a party. It's like you know what you're going to get, but you're still excited for it, and you can still be a little surprised sometimes. You but know it's what? delightful. That is such a, yes, because, like, who's not going to want that cheese? Like, I'm always going to eat that if it's there. Even if there's no crackers, I'll just cut pieces off and eat it. Mm -hmm. Like a piece of cheese bubble gum. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I like that. Everybody likes it. It's good. Yes. What is your poetry? I also did a haiku, so. All these clothes are mine. Be nice to the therapist. Dusty baloney. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, I I wouldn't partake in the dusty bologna. I also would not, but just for the sheer fact that I don't like bologna. If it was dusty ham, I'd be into it. Nope, 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 nope. I, I love lunch meats. Nope, I'm going to have mustard bread before I do any of that. Blech. No, I love I love lunch meats, just not bologna for some reason. And I am, if a hot dog became a person, that would be me. For some reason, I just do not like bologna. Um, and that being said, the cheese that I did pick, I picked American cheese just for the idea of having a dusty sandwich in this old house. Um, and that's that. Yeah. A single wrapped slice. Yeah. And they can split it in half. So you like most of your sandwich is like, meh, but then when you bite the cheese part, you're like, all right. Uh, what are you thankful for this week? So, um, we've been making a lot of plans for this upcoming, uh, fall, which are super exciting and... We really want to get things ramping up and stuff, but I'm just really, really excited for, like, nature in the fall and, like, going up to New England and, like, the leaves and such. We've done a few road trips up there. Uh, well, obviously, we, like, live on the East Coast, but, like, going up to, like, Maine and stuff, especially in the fall, there's just nothing like it. I actually was, um, I was driving home from work. Um, a single leaf fell from the branch of a tree in front of my car, and I was like, it's time. I can't hit that note that you hear online of the Mariah Carey, I think it is. I can't hit that note. <laughs> but that's it. Let's it's turn time. Out. I like that. Yeah. It is almost time. Your coughs smell like pineapple because that's what you've been drinking. And I don't know if it's off-putting or not. <laughs> no, no, it's inviting. I picked this week. I'm very thankful for all of the really great gardening content. Oh, my God been coughing no one judge me <coughs> right at the finish line and you do this to me here jelly ho finish this up my favorite garden content <laughs> is meg grows plants she's just so 
thoughtful and inspiring. I love the dishes she comes up with. Her garden's amazing. I just love, uh, you know, the change of seasons is gearing up for the next round of gardening. Yeah. So fall gardening is great because you have a lot of cabbage and broccoli and Brussels sprouts and mm. carrots. Just the, the wheel of life taking another turn. It's very true. Mm. Yes. It's so painful. we're all excited, aren't we guys? We are so excited. We're so excited for all the cool stuff we are planning for you. So keep tuned. Keep an eye keep on tuned, the like social subscribe. media. And to wrap it up for this week, we will leave you guys with read cheese and eat books. Thank you. We'll Bye. catch you next time. Bye.